quick question. What do these jobs have in common? Accountant, carpenter, beautician, electrician, photographer, graphic artist, interior designer, choreographer, writer, chef, seamstress. They all work in the Oklahoma film industry. And there's a place for you to join the action. Learn more about starting your film career in Oklahoma by visiting okfilmmusic.org forward slash getting started. Hi, welcome to the 20th annual De virtual Dead Center Film Festival. My name is Jeanette, Jeanette Stanton, and I am the assistant director for the Oklahoma Film and Music Office, and we are so excited to have you joining us today. We are sponsoring Dead Center this year, and we will be sponsoring the OFMO Film Series panels all day long, so make sure you tune in to our website, make sure you turn into our Facebook page and Dead Center's Facebook page. Next up is going to be Kyle Roberts. He's going to be bringing you an introductory course to stop motion animation, and make sure you stick around because we're going to have a live Q&A after, and submit those questions on our Facebook page and the Dead Center Facebook page. Hi, I'm Kyle Roberts. I'm the creative director of Reckless Abandonment Pictures. And here at Reckless Abandonment Pictures, whether it's live action or stop motion, we specialize in what we call radically family-friendly content. Uh, and thankfully, over the last several years, we've got the chance to work with Mattel and Lego and DreamWorks and all of these fabulous studios and companies. And we get to tell visual stories with them and get to do that right here in Oklahoma City. So we're here today, uh, virtually, thanks COVID, uh, Dead Center Film Festival, and this is kind of a basic to stop motion class, and we're gonna run through kind of our typical lighting setup, our camera setup, uh, software we use, and go through a shot. Uh, from concept all the way through final product. Uh, one shot with, with Wally, uh, action figure that I have, and uh, toy TV that we have that we actually on a different project sent to space, kind of the edge of earth and space, uh, which was really fun. So yeah, thankful to Dead Center, uh, Oklahoma Film Music Office, and everyone involved uh, just for this time to get to be together. And, and stop motion itself is very, very tedious and um, takes a lot of time, uh, but hopefully what we put together today is, is something that's uh, informative and hopefully fairly entertaining uh, throughout the process. So let's get to it. Okay, uh, so we are here with Wally <laughs> and the toy television set that we were talking about and we'll go through a little bit of just our basic three-point lighting setup. We have a softbox back there uh, and two just tiny LED, they're all LED lights uh, and I believe the brand is Aperture uh, and these are just like $50 lights. I think that's a $250 light. So as, a, as the package together, uh, you know, it's very, very um, inexpensive uh, for what we're doing. Uh, and for most of the stuff, we just use these three lights. Occasionally we'll add a fourth light um, if needed. But these three lights serve a dual purpose all the way around. So not only does our main kind of source and key light and then our two fill lights fill up uh, evenly our green screen here, our psych wall and green screen, very evenly. Uh, they also kind of provide uh, you know, main source and a little bit of a backlight on our subject, which in our world, uh, it's typically toys. <laughs> so they're, you know, anywhere from a couple inches to, to maybe, you know, 10 or 12 inches or so. Uh, so in our world, this is a whole studio <laughs> uh, kind of thing. We're able to, to do this, you know, fairly, uh, very effectively and um, a low, you know, footprint all the way around. And then we have all this hooked up to, um, our DSLR camera, which is the basic DSLR camera. It's a Canon uh, 7D Mark II uh, that's plugged in just to my um, MacBook laptop. And then we have that synced up and Bluetooth to uh, a screen up here, uh, which I'm able to see everything really, really well as I'm animating, which is a huge help uh, as an animator. Yeah, with this setup, you can totally uh, do this at home. It doesn't have to be on a green screen. It could be on um, a kitchen countertop or a bathroom countertop. Uh, one of the first ones we did with Wally actually was on my bathroom uh, countertop and it was like Wally meets a toothpaste. <laughs> and so like Wally came around and like rolled over the toothpaste and then he's like, uh, gets really excited and rolls over it and he's like, oh, and then he's like, oh no, I just got, you know, toothpaste all over my wheels. <laughs> so it's something that was like, you know, really, really fun. And you know, it had a beginning, middle, end of the story. I think it was only a few hundred pictures total for a stop motion. I shot it in like a night on my phone uh, and like edited it the next day or two. So it doesn't have to be like the super elaborate, like, 
you know, we've done with Lego and DreamWorks that's months and months and months uh, of work and time. You can do this from your phone um, and, and do it anywhere. So yeah, let's go in and dive into Dragon Frame. So if you look here, we're going through our settings in Dragon Frame. Again, this is hooked up to my camera, this on a tripod, and it just, you know, has this live view the whole time. Uh, if you see me um, put my hand in front of the screen, there we go, this hairy hand that you're gonna see a lot <laughs> throughout this process. Um, so then we get into our camera settings. What's great about this, um, like a lot of stop motion apps, uh, you can control all of your camera settings right here. So we have our uh, shutter speed, we have our aperture, our um, f-stop, and then we also have our ISO. Uh, and all three of these, you know, just basic, you know, photography and filmmaking all have to do with uh, the amount of light that is let into the camera. And they all, they all do, it, do it in different ways. So your shutter speed, the lower it is, the lighter it is, and it's letting light into the camera. The aperture or f-stop, the lower it is, the more light is let into the camera, but also the shallower the depth of field you have is, which uh, a lot of times you typically kind of want that lower, especially on like a close-up, so the background's like blurred out and looks kind of like cinematic, you know? <laughs> Uh, but in our world on green screen, we typically try to have the, the aperture actually as high as it could possibly go. So our whole world is in focus because it's on green screen. So if any of it is blurred out, it becomes really, really tricky in the next stage uh, in post-production of trying to key it out when you have a blurry image uh, or even partially blurred image. So that's why this is pretty high. It's on like 17 or 18 right now. Uh, and then in general with ISO, the more you gain, the more you grain. So the higher it is, the more, you may not really even see it totally in this, but the higher that, that is, the more um, grainy the image is going uh, to be. We can kind of level these out, but if this is at, at this high, let me see if I could do this real quick. Let's do a test shot and see if we can zoom in here and show uh, how grainy, see how grainy this picture is? when you really zoom into it uh, compared to what we are going uh, to take, uh, like this one, which is really, really clear on Wally. -E. Okay, cool. So let's get into this shot. So story time. <laughs> uh, you always wanna pick out a story, of course. Uh, ideally, in any kind of stop motion, you wanna actually like storyboard it, uh, especially if you're presenting it to a client because it takes a lot of time uh, in a given day uh, on some of our projects, we typically get about four seconds in the 10 to 12 hour um, production day of, of full animation. So of, in, of stop motion animation in a, in, a, in a day, we normally get only about four seconds or so. So um, you don't wanna waste a whole week of work uh, to get, what, 20 seconds of final product and it not be what the client wants. So it's normally really important to go through storyboards. We have amazing storyboard artists on our team. Uh, Jonathan Kelsch, uh, Jerry Bennett are two that we use a lot. That they really help set the tone and set the mood uh, to the client and the expectations with the client. So whether we're doing um, Trolls with DreamWorks, or we did this whole Thomas and Friends series uh, with Mattel, and as you can see, kind of a beginning, middle, and end through the through the project. We send the storyboards to the client, and they approve it, and that really helps us every single frame and every stage of the pro project. Whether we're getting background plates here in Oklahoma City, which I'm really proud of, uh, like at Plaza Walls uh, for Thomas and Friends, or downtown at uh, Basketball Goals, the kind of outdoor park by the by Chesapeake Arena, to um, People's House just here in Oklahoma City. Uh, Denise Castelli is the executive producer on a lot of our projects, and she was. Grateful enough to let us use her house for this Trolls project uh, where they're like building a cake in stop motion and shooting it all there in her house. But anyway, uh, back to Wally and the stop motion. Uh, you typically want to do storyboards, but for this case, you, you always want to have a story and have a beginning, middle, and end. So in this story, our beginning, middle, and end, we're going to have Wally come up and maybe like touch the TV, kind of pat on it a little bit. It turns on, which we're going to do in post. Uh, TV turns on, he kind of freaks out and flails his arms and, and rolls around and then comes back and then Eve, um, it comes onto the screen and he's like a little bit more relaxed. He's like, oh, okay. Like this isn't as scary as I thought that it was. <laughs> uh, and I think that's something that's really fun with Wally is that he 
almost like Curious George. Like he's such a curious and fun character and you really don't even need a lot of dialogue or any dialogue with him. It's more in his expressions and his emotions. So with stop motion and kind of this basic teaching of this class, uh, you really get to like work with that and feel that through this uh, very, very quick story. Uh, also, he works really well animating because um, he has, uh, he stands up by himself, which is great. So any other toy, you wanna throw me like a Ninja Turtle or Spider-Man or something? Here's Michelangelo. And this is a great figure um, by NECA. I don't know if you can wanna like, I'll hold it right here. It has a lot of great detail. We use this for a stop motion that we did for Nickelodeon here recently to celebrate the 30 year anniversary of the, which makes me feel really old, <laughs> but the 1990 film. Um, but obviously these characters like don't really stand up by themselves, especially if you're, if you're like having them jump around and dance around and do different things, they're just gonna fall over. <laughs> fall over. So what we have to do is build lots of different rigs um, for them. Uh, is that Spider-Man one over there? This is the rig that we built for Spider-Man and this is what we would use quite a bit. Um, it's called square stock and we basically drill in to their back or their front just depending on if you have we're setting up a front or back rig. Um, and then we use this end which is the other end of the square stock. I don't know if you can kind of zoom in here and show that. But essentially, you plug this guy in here, and you have a rig that really holds them up really, really nice. So you can have, you know, do any, any little movement you want throughout this whole, you know, this whole process kind of thing. Hey! So, anyway. <laughs> Okay, so first up, what we're going to do, uh, now we have, have an idea of the story and our beginning, middle, end of this short uh, shot here. Um, we are going to use a little bit of this putty and put it at the bottom of the TV so it kind of locks it down. So as Wally is going around it, it does not uh, move, <laughs> which is important uh, for stop motion um, that, that our set is live and nothing is moving around. Cool. So let's walk through the controls a little bit in Dragon Frame. So you see here as I'm arrowing through, uh, it's going to go back and forth. Um, when you see these little tally marks up here, and so I catch that, but when you see these tally marks up here, that means we are on the live frame. So if I'm right here, uh, it means that we're totally live and on the frame. Um, and then we also have uh, different buttons on here. This is the onion layer buttons. So we can go back and forth up to one, two, three four onion layers. Uh, if, if you need, uh, I typically just do one or none and it allows me to really see um, the frame we shot. And if I go forward one, where we came from. So it kind of gives this ghost image of where you came from so you know exactly where you were the frame before, uh, which especially in the digital world of stop motion uh, makes all of this, it's never easy, <laughs> but it makes it at least you know somewhat doable. Um, Sometimes I use a short play, short play button to see it on, a, on a long sequence, which we'll, we'll probably do as we get into this. And it just shows like the last couple seconds, I believe, uh, of where we're at. Uh, and there's also a loop option and lots of other options in here that we're really not going to even get into a lot of it. But, but a lot of times we go back and forth the arrow, play button, and onion layers, uh, and enter is capture button. So let's get started with this shot. And we're going to start with Wally off the screen. <laughs> And there we go, we just did picture number one. And then we're gonna bring Wally up a little bit where his hand is just barely in the screen. Picture number two. And then I'm gonna make sure and really carefully move his wheels every single time. That's another reason I really, really liked this figure and animating with it. And some other figures that I've used or seen, the belt doesn't move. There's just like these little wheels at the bottom, like a Hot Wheels toy or something. Uh, and that's something that, uh, that really helps sell this in every single frame, you know, that his um, belt is moving as he's, as he's moving and really helps uh, just with the whole motion of the stop motion. <laughs> the motion part of the stop motion. <laughs> okay, picture number three. And then here, I'm probably gonna start kind of going a little bit faster here uh, and just kind of rolling through this and talking through this. But uh, while he's coming in here, you know, he's seeing the television 
And by the way, talking about frames per second, we are shooting at 12 frames per second. Frames per second, anytime you can switch it to 23.976, which is basically 24, which a lot of film is set to uh, for today in the, the example of this class. Uh, our projects are typically either 12 frames per second or 24 frames per, per second. Uh, kind of in general, the more higher end or commercial it is, it's 24 frames a second. It's very, very fluid. 12 frames per second is also pretty fluid. It basically doubles up every frame that you have in the 24. Hi, I'm Kyle Roberts. I'm the creative director of Reckless Abandonment Pictures. And here at Reckless Abandonment Pictures, whether it's live action or stop motion, we specialize in what we call radically family-friendly content. Uh, and thankfully, over the last several years, we've got the chance to work with Mattel and two trains coming by, <laughs> so you can kind of hear them and see them. We shoot this, I think it's uh, around 6, 6K. Um, so for 10, 1080p, we're actually able to size this down quite a bit. Um, to yeah about 30 35 percent of what we actually shot at so we have plenty of room here uh to zoom in if we want to as wally's like zooming around and stuff um but so let's get this in here first thing we're going to do is actually since it's only about five seconds we're going to trim our timeline um instead of a minute and 15 seconds we are going to make it um have plenty of time here but let's say 20 seconds uh, total uh, but just kind of condenses the time that we're looking at and the the timeline that we're in but we can see this kind of coming out here it's going to take a second especially the first time even on quarter of the quality uh, you view it because it, after effects is trying to um, read all of the image sequence all the whole capture together and now we play it back, should play back fairly real time. I think you could see my hand coming in here somewhere. <laughs> see my hand here in this frame. <laughs> so we will uh, go ahead and cut that out. And then bring this one over and parent it to the first one. So anything time we do anything to this first one, it will also act to the second clip. Okay, so let's work on um, keyframe or a key light, which is taking out the green screen. Um, and what we're gonna do is actually put like a solid color behind it. Uh, key light. And then you, you grab your color grabber here and select the background. And then some people will tell you to kind of mess with the screen get grain, gain and balance uh, to, to dial in on it, but I almost uh, never use that. Um, we'll leave these at 150. Um, and we come down here to screen matte and really, really work on the clip black and the clip white. So we're going to bring up the clip black just a little bit and bring down the white quite a bit. Um, Normally around a 30 here and a 70 here tends to work pretty well, but we need to adjust kind of per, uh, per project. And then actually I'm gonna bring this down to about 40 so the blue really kind of stays in there too. Um, and this is looking pretty good. Um, really, it's really kind of cutting out some of the, some of the wally here. So let's kind of do this again on the thing we really want to make sure and see here is the um, the shadows, um, and so that's still true. But we'll we'll need to kind of rotoscope some of this out, some of the graininess and dustiness of this. Um, but uh, so we got that. We're gonna paste this key light to this other one. Now we got Wally coming in. So that's I mean that's the super basic um, idea here. Um, I think we're seeing my hand here again. It's going a little too fast. <laughs> but I think we could even clean that up as we're or cleaning it up and rotoscoping stuff out. Uh, but what we also want to do is bring in um, that sweet uh, dead center graphic. So we're going to add that into our project. And we're also going to bring in I have this like bad TV uh, effect that when it turns on, we'll have that come on first. It's so gonna bring this TV noise in here. So about right there when he starts to freak out, 
So we're going to bring this in here just for measure. Composite this TV in here. Bingo, bango, bongo. Uh, da, 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 da. So we can maybe lower the opacity a little bit, see what we're looking at. 20, uh, 6, 25, oops, 25. Scale is 25. Let's do a quick mask around this. Since this TV isn't moving, it's not going anywhere. This should work great here. Sometimes uh, a quick mask like that is called a garbage mask. Not because it's garbage, <laughs> uh, but because it's really quick and easy uh, to do. What is this garbage? Okay, so oh, screen. We're gonna play with some different um, blending modes here on the television to see what we like. Um, that's okay. Uh, screen. We'll see if we get something to make it look uh, lighten overlay maybe, uh, and maybe um, lighten it a little bit. That's pretty good. Uh, we could actually double it up and have one overlay and have one as the screen if we want. And it's kind of a mixture of both of those. And I think that's pretty nice. So it's going to come on the screen. While he's freaking out, what's going on? I don't know what's happening. And it comes back around. And then it's going to switch to the dead center graphic that we have here. And there's actually a few different ways we could do this. We could bring all of these together and nest these into a composition and so we're just having one mask over the whole thing. Uh, and I think that's actually what I'm going to do. Um, and we're also, as Wally goes over this, we're going to have to paint that out um, as he goes over it. But what we're going to do here is bring in this dead center graphic. We're going to nest all of these compositions together. Uh, do that layer pre-compose. And we're going to say uh, TV uh, asset comp move all attributes, great. And so everything is now in here. So then we got this dead center graphics on the TV. And while it comes over to it, super excited. Um, and we're going to do a freeze frame of this. And to do that, I go to layer, time, uh, freeze frame, and then we can extend this out as long as we would like. I'm just going to make it to the end of our timeline here. And then what we're going to do is add a camera um, to this whole project. And essentially, we need to make, we need to make all of these uh, 3D objects. And as Wally comes in here and looks at it, we are going to quickly zoom in to the TV and crash to uh, the dead center animation. Um, so we're going to do a positioning of our camera and then zoom way in. You can see I'm really zooming in on all of this uh, all the way to um, the television to where it basically crashes at um, pretty much full screen here. Uh, and we could do like a Right click it and <clears throat> do an easy ease out. So it goes shoop. That's pretty good. And then again, you can adjust and play with this a little bit um, as you like it. And what we are probably going to do is do like a flash to white and then to the graphic. Uh, so we're going to bring up a solid uh, white color, um, do opacity. Uh, 
<coughs> change in the past year from zero to 100 with keyframes, and then back to zero, and have our dead center full screen um, animation underneath uh, this. So it is essentially dissolving to it. So is going to it like this. Dead Center Film Festival. Be there. <laughs> you are here. You're here digitally, virtually. Cool. Well, I mean, um, that's pretty much uh, this shot uh, and this scene. You know, we have a beginning, middle, end to our story. Uh, I'm probably going to spend some time really kind of cleaning up a lot of this stuff, possibly playing with a different look to the background instead of just a white. Uh, maybe we have some of this kind of dead center blue, uh, Oklahoma State flag blue <laughs> uh, behind it. Um, play with a couple things there, see, see if we like it, or just the clean white background. Um, and then add some, some sound to it of Wally kind of seeing these different things, the TV turning on, all that kind of stuff really helps add uh, to it. And um, we'll go ahead and show you the, the final right now. So that's it. I mean, we, we went through a whole shot of stop motion and just a real basic workflow showing from concepts uh, all the way to final shots, uh, to telling a quick story, uh, beginning, middle, end, uh, and doing that um, with action figures, with toys, <laughs> uh, which is a big part of what we do here. Again, um, we're th really thankful we get to work with major toy brands and helping them um, bring their stories to life. We're thankful for Dead Center, uh, and thankful for Oklahoma Film and Music Office uh, for helping uh, put this together. Uh, hopefully you all have learned some and were somewhat entertained uh, throughout this process, and I encourage you to get out there and create, whether it's with your phone or anything that you have lying around, and get out and tell a story. There's a free app called Stop Motion Studio. It has a lot of the same things, onion layers, shows your frames per second, choose your frames per second. A lot of the stuff that we did today with our equipment, you can do straight up on your phone or a tablet. Uh, and that's something that we use in elementary schools and high schools. Uh, and we work with them and, and really can um, create some really fun stuff uh, with that app. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Dead Center Film Festival virtual experience. Later. Welcome back. Jeanette Stanton here with the Oklahoma Film and Music Office, and we're welcoming Kyle Roberts. That was an amazing, amazing introduction to stop motion. How long did that take you to make? Uh, it was a couple weeks. We filmed it in a day and, you know, just really spent some love on editing and kind of making a somewhat of like a show. You know, yeah. Thank you. So if for anyone wanting to get more or learn more, just just reach out to Kyle, right? That's right. Um, yeah, stop just motion. contact me any day, any time <laughs> of the day, night or day. <laughs> awesome. So, Kyle, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background. Yeah, uh, I went to Oklahoma Christian uh, here in Oklahoma, um, and then uh, right out of that, I started a job at News OK in the Oklahoman. Uh, during that time, uh, I just started playing with action figures. <laughs> uh, me, my buddy Nathan Poppy, um, he would do like the doodle art background stuff, and then. We like recreated the Ninja Turtles open, like the 1987 open, uh, and just posted on YouTube. Uh, and it got featured by like, LA Times and USA Today and Wired Magazine and like all these things. Power of YouTube. Power of YouTube. Yep. Uh, and you know, got millions of views. And then that led to um, Viral Video Showdown. Oh, uh, wow. Which was like a reality show that we got to do to kind of represent Oklahoma. Okay. Uh, which then led to Post Human Project, which is a feature film, and a lot more stop motion and commercial stuff after that. Nice. The short <laughs> version. Yeah. So how long have you been at this total? Uh, like, stop motion probably about nine years. Nine years, yeah. Yeah, yeah it really takes that long to yeah. master any trade, right? Yeah. You really have to work at it. Yeah. So um, what draws you to stop motion? Do you love the, the detail of it? Do you just love action yeah. heroes, action you know, figures? Sometimes, like, when we're talking to major toy brands or whatever, they look at us as, like, the stop motion company. And that's great, uh, but I really just think of stop motion as another form of storytelling. It's a form of animation, right? Um, but 
but going back to the beginning sort of a little bit, we, I saw Fantastic Mr. Fox uh, with my nephews in theater. <laughs> when when you, like, go to see movies in theater, it's crazy, right? Mm-hmm. When we used to do that. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> but, um, but we saw that, and I was, like, blown away, just completely blown away. Uh, and so we were like, we could do this. We could figure this out, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Okay. And that's when we just started playing, playing with toys, playing with stuff on our phone and then our cameras, and, you know, just kind of started evolving from there. Very good. Very nice. So you, can you tell us a little bit, you've obviously have been doing this a while. Mm -hmm. You've gotten to the opportunity to talk with a lot of brands, big brands. Um, Nickelodeon, you mentioned to me earlier, DreamWorks, I know from the rebate. Um, How does someone make that happen? Especially with something that's such a niche, which can work for you, I'm guessing. How did you get involved with making those connections because that obviously took a lot of work yeah well we talked about kind of the power of youtube you know anyone yeah. can post something it's probably not going to get a million views but it might and for us we kind of got lucky and you know uh, through so many things that happen of different blogs and stuff posting about it uh but we kind of got lucky in our first one dreamworks actually emailed me <laughs> after seeing nice. the, after seeing the ninja turtles one which was like a bizarre call uh from from burbank or whatever you know that i got uh, um and, and you almost want to hang up you're like right, this is like this okay is not real. okay dude <laughs> um bye right <laughs> um i'm not giving you my uh date of birth or credit card right info. um no but so that's when we did uh dino trucks for dreamworks okay. it was an intro stop motion intro for their show uh, and then we just you start a relationship, just like with any kind of business or any kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So every time I go back to Comic Con or go to California, like I'll just ask them, like, "Hey, do you want to go to lunch? Do you want to grab some coffee and just kind of catch up and you know reconnect?" Yeah. Uh, I feel like a big part, whether it's stop motion or live action, a big part of everything that that we do is is like FaceTime. <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. so it's so when we're going back, we're we're just reminding them that we're here and we're creating stuff. Uh, which is about all I think you can't like make anyone hire you, yeah. <laughs> you know, for anything, but just remind them like, oh yeah, they're here and they're doing interesting stuff. Yeah. So keep creating networking, never turn down a meeting, yep. all that stuff, be Absolutely. prepared, all that type of stuff. Absolutely. I know you go to Comic-Con quite a bit. Yeah. You've been several years, right? Yeah. I think we've gone five, five yeah. years and each year, you know, we set up meetings with all kinds of toy companies. So we'll just, even ones that we never met and we'll do like a quick, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, like pitch meeting of like what yeah. we do and you know what we're about and everything and the good thing about those types of festivals is they're expecting that yeah so it's it's a really good investment investment in yourself i'm guessing in your team yeah so to take the time to do that and i always try to dress fun uh yeah and i always say dress <laughs> for success and then my mom always told me to also just dress for like be yourself too. be yeah. if i showed up today in this interview in a three-piece suit right. i think everyone would be like what's that guy doing yeah <laughs> what's what <laughs> happened that's, yeah, yeah that's weird <laughs> uh but i have a flamingo shirt because we kind of sell fun package fun uh to help that's you a know, great way to push look at toys it. and push products mm-hmm. so when they look take one look at you and they're like oh this guy yeah he knows what, <laughs> he yeah, knows no, what that's he's a doing. great tip yeah, yeah. absolutely um, so a dish, you're working on a new company yes. called Kingdom Story. Kingdom Media Club, Ki- yeah. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, Kingdom Media Club is a nonprofit here in Oklahoma City. Um, the main purpose of it is to be a fiscal sponsorship for family-friendly and faith-based films. And so there are several nonprofits like this in the U.S., but of looking around, there wasn't one here in Oklahoma. So we were like – we got to do it. <laughs> we got to, you know, there's so many opportunities for the other family friendly and um, faith based films that are, are being produced here uh, that we could be that nonprofit outlet. So, essentially, what it does, you know, when you're fundraising for a movie, you have, uh, you typically have your investors, uh, and then this also provides an opportunity for people to donate as like a tax write off versus like an actual investment in a film. Got it. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, so we basically are taking that leap of faith, uh, and, and we made this nonprofit. And so I uh, found out just a couple months ago it got approved, you know, by the IRS, <laughs> uh, right. which is exciting. Mm-hmm. It's also weird getting a mail uh, from the IRS, <laughs> and then you open it, and like, oh, great, no, this was approved, good. You're official. Uh, that's what we're trying to do. So so we have a film series this summer uh, that we're helping sponsor at the, at the drive-in, at Winch- Winchester Drive-In. The first one is Goonies on June 23rd, and we're bringing in Mark Marshall, who's like the personal assistant at Steven Spielberg. Uh, and we're gonna okay, have a discussion nice. with him before the film. Okay. And he has so many great behind the scenes stories with all the all the kid actors and everything. So uh, how can that. people watch that, tune into that? Yeah, we have a Facebook page, okay. uh, Kingdom Media Club, uh, okay. and then we have an event on there too, with like the Goonies plus like discussion with Mark. So Marshall. people need to definitely follow you, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. Get all the all the up to date stop motion information. So can you tell me um, what you're working on right now? 
Uh, we've actually started picking up quite a bit at the moment. Um, we're doing a music video for Pomplamoose, who's a great band uh, and super fun band. It's like a stop motion music video, and also just doing regular video production stuff, like for Philharmonic and and other local companies as well. Okay, and you told me an interesting story a second ago. Yeah. About Nickelodeon, Uh-oh. you want to share with the group? What was the story? Oh yeah, the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> the thing. Ninja Turtles. So yeah. during this time of um, isolation and uh, COVIDness, <laughs> uh, we try to yeah. just figure out. Gotta I'm, stay I'm, busy. I'm a big Ninja Turtles fan. If you know me, you know I love my Ninja Turtles. <laughs> come together which fight, is your favorite fight the shredder donatello donatello by okay far. <laughs> but um so so we we recreated uh the 1990 trailer uh with action figures frame by frame okay uh and we just did it uh, during this time where you know all of our animators were at home and we, <laughs> we didn't know what to do so we just did it for fun uh and then nickelodeon contacted us and said hey we want to buy that from you so we actually got paid uh paid to do it to do um, something you didn't even know yeah way. that was yeah. for fun <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's because I think you said it was kind of funny. You thought you were going to get in trouble. Yeah, I got an email from them, and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Either I don't think they're going to sue us, but we might get like right. a cease and desist you know, email right. from them. Or they fell in love down. with it instead. They said, yeah. they said, this is great, and we want to you know, share it on our social yeah. channels, and we actually want to buy it from you. Yeah, so um, message to everyone would be just keep creating, right? For yes, sure. Keep creating. Absolutely. Do what you love. Absolutely. So that wraps up um, Stop Motion Animation with Kyle Roberts. Thank you so much, Kyle. Please make sure you stay tuned for the next um, for the next film school panel series coming up, which is going to be C- CGI with Stephanie Roach. And Ooh. we'll see you guys soon. <laughs>